All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, the Nigerian developer space is growing and fast too. Now, this is evident in the number of developers, meetups, hackathon, and conferences that are held frequently. And these efforts are beginning to reflect on global scene. Now, Olua Sheung Fadiora is a seasoned Nigerian multipreneur, okay, and a former investment banker. He is the founder of MyFlare Resources Limited, one of the pioneer companies in the female tech industry. MyFlare is the first indigenous app that helps women to track their menstrual cycle, get personalized rem reminders, and receive tailored sanitary kit monthly for paid subscribers. <laughs> All right. So our most frequently used um, feature the free, the free the is the free and live chat with a doctor now has several subscribers to the app now remember you can join this conversation tweet at us at plus tv africa or at way show africa one with the hashtag ways or you send us sms or whatsapp to 081 8038 thank you so much for joining us Shem. now look at how i'm so excited <laughs> so why did you decide to start um uh, an app company and uh, focusing on women especially um, so it's a very interesting story in the sense that growing up I was always in the midst of women oh so I am very comfortable around women can I can see that <laughs> <laughs> very comfortable around women and you know a couple of interesting stories about some people that I met you know I had one particular lady says that she said that for her to know when her period will be starting she would actually feel pains in her left leg Ooh. and i'm like okay so is there no other way for you to be able to track and know when your period will start and she says no that she knows that even with her mom that most times they'll start feeling pains in her legs then i also discussed with another lady who told me that for her that she's always very angry mm. ah. Aha. <laughs> so, <laughs> funny story. So, funny story. Uh, my husband would always say that, you know, at some point, he said, he told me one day, he said, go and study. Anytime your period is coming, you are always upset. Like, you are always emotional. Any little thing, you flip. So, when I now eventually found out, so I started repenting, <laughs> you know. And but for me, I feel a lot of warmth. Like, I feel very feverish. I feel a lot of warmth, like probably a week or two weeks before, you know, it's not like it's coming and I'm feverish, so it would have happened like a week or two. So, so that was the reason you yeah, so that. Is there it, a better way? It, it, there, I, I know there, people that yeah. cry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was going to ask that, so what's your own story? Oh, right. um, so, mine is very bad. I think it's because of people like me that they make apps, is that I, I tend to forget when was the last time? So I tend to forget, but I do have cramps, but okay. they're not steady, so I don't really have a telltale sign about this thing. So I think the apps are for people like me. <laughs> yeah. So if you think about it, part of the things that I also heard is issues around the irregular menstrual patterns. Mm, exactly. So you have a lot of women who don't know when their period will start and then they don't know when the period would end. Then you also have issues around women who are trying to get pregnant. And without that menstrual cycle, you really can't get pregnant. True. So those are part of the issues that we looked at and we're like, okay, you know what? Let's even check it out. Again, at some point, I was also curious when I got married to try and know, okay, this is for guys. You know, when you're thinking, <laughs> okay, when is it a safe period when for me to have sex? Oh, you know, okay, that and makes things sense. like that, yeah. you know. So again, if you look at also the religious backgrounds, some organizations, they actually preach that you can't use condoms and all the all other the contraceptives, yeah. so that's what they true. actually practice is for you to have sex safe during sex. your safe, safe period. Yes. period and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So we thought, okay, you know what, why don't we just check out if there's an app? Again, there are loads and loads and loads of apps out there, yeah. particularly for that particular, you know, issue for women, the menstrual cycle and all that. But we, we now checked and saw that there was actually none in Nigeria. Awesome. So uh, does it mean that I cannot download... A foreign app? No, you can. You know, a lot of ladies use yeah, foreign apps. Foreign but apps, when okay. you look at, so what is now making your app different? Stand because now, now uh, we were just chatting just now. I say we have about fifty apps on our phones. But if you really check the number of active apps that you actually use, yes. you know, it's quite you know few in number. So what makes your app different? What does it make? What does it make? Um, what's the difference that makes it stand out? you know, compared to the ones that you find oh, oh, okay. all over okay. the net. So let me uh, answer it this way. First, if you look at our app, 
we, what we have tried to do is to give you localized information. So if you look at most of the foreign apps, when they're giving you, say, advice on how to treat menstrual cramps and some other stuff like that, what they will be giving you is information based on where they are. So you need to have localized knowledge. So we have that. Secondly, on our app, you can chat with a doctor. So there are instances where you want to have a conversation with a doctor without actually seeing that doctor. So mm -hmm. with that, you can come on the app, you can ask. So for example, a lady asked a question one day that, oh, my period ended three days ago. I had sex today. Is there a risk of me getting pregnant? pregnant yeah. So, you know, people want to have that. And teenagers, they don't want to go and meet mommy and say, let their mom or parents know that they are already sexually active. So they want a very private. anonymous ah. and private... The, the pastors will say, blood of Jesus. How can you be... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> this is 2020. <laughs> I have to build yeah, so again, it's for reasons like that that we decided okay let's do this mm -hmm. and also when you look at it women when they try to conceive is a very major issue where you know you're trying to conceive you're trying to understand your cycle again you're talking about stickiness that why would you go back to the app so there's a feature on the app that allows you, you to you know back. come back to it like you get Instagram. so every day you get a daily quote that comes and pops up on your you know device telling you this then you also get some other reminders that are pretty cool and just you know if your period is about to start you for a, for example you can get a reminder that says your period is starting in three okay, days okay so let's let's bring it back to apps now we, <laughs> we've gotten a, enough lecture on <laughs> on uh, on your app so um okay you want to go with the business stuff. so i what before the business i was even going to look at the social impact because we you know we've read about how you know, some, uh, should I say, people that are not too privileged don't have the right, um, you know, tools to use during the menstrual period. And I heard Are we going back to menstrual period? Yeah, so it went, <laughs> I just need to ask you, because I heard you mentioned, there was a kit that you mentioned that they get. Uh, so you just yeah. didn't touch on that. And that, how can that even help people? So what, yeah, what, 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 what you're talking about is what is generally referred to as period poverty. Mm. So oh, you have exactly. a lot of... I can tell you some very interesting stories about that as well. Now, one of the things that we tried to do on the app, which has not really kicked off well, is to get other women who have access to donate f to people okay. who don't I, have access. So, okay. so, so we don't focus so much on... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let, let's understand, um, because I feel personally that Nigerians were not there when it comes to, you know, like, I mean, you create an app abroad and you just hear one million downloads. Uh, 500 million downloads and all of that. But in Nigeria, I feel that a lot of people going into um, the tech space is because there's a global fund available for businesses in tech. Because, I mean, I just came out from one meeting, one investment meeting, which day was this? On, on, on Friday, and they were talking, no, on Thursday. And, and what they were saying was that most of the time, most investment investors are looking for business that are scalable and usually right now everybody's looking at the tech business because it's, it's scalable but how truly lucrative it is it you know i mean owning an app or probably building apps for people okay so there are two sides to it the first side is those who build the actual apps okay so if you want to build an app it's not everybody that is a developer that can sit down and actually write the in some cases 50,000 lines of Codes, codes. Yeah. Mm. so you need to in a lot of cases outsource now if you're a developer people can outsource to you then you can go through the process from the UI UX design to the actual writing of the codes to the beta testing to the final launch of the apps and all that so there's that space now the cost of doing that varies from depending on who you're dealing with so you can have it as high as ten thousand dollars and then you can have it way 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 as as $250,000 also depending on the features, depending on the complexity of the codes that you're trying to write. Now, <clears throat> on the other side of it is how do you monetize your app? Now, monetizing the app is pretty interesting because most apps, the business model that you find out is once they have a lot of people, mm. with those people you can then start selling advertisements. So okay. that's the major, major way. So think about our app, for example. In Lagos, there are over 15 million women. Imagine if we have every single woman in Lagos using Download our app. Download the app, yeah. It means that we have 15 million. No, but million. you have that. So the, the question is, <coughs> is it a viable business at this time in Nigeria now? 
or if we were just looking at it okay we're projecting in the next five years what's what will happen because i see a lot of people create apps but they don't get much traction to that app so I was, i'm now wondering was it a, a wise decision to have created that app so maybe you help me correct me if i'm wrong okay so the truth of the matter is when you're creating an app in your mind you feel this everybody, is, everybody needs this. I don't need to come to Everybody needs yeah. it. But I can tell you from experience that you will be shell-shocked a lot of times because you, you think this is what people need and then you find out to your chagrin that really people do not really need your app. So if you check out the app store, there are a lot of apps that are out there and by the end of the day, that's why when we were talking before of camera, I was telling you that it can be depressing. You yeah. know? So sometimes you go there and you go and check how many downloads and you see 10. You're like, what? I was expecting to see 100. But one thing I can tell you is this, in terms of stickiness, most times what happens is you have to, there's a period you have to wait. Now, there are some apps that, you know, quickly sticky and all that, particularly apps that are more popular with teenagers. And like if you TikTok. check, yeah, hey. exactly. So when you look at TikTok, I thought Instagram yes. was it. No, until I saw TikTok. TikTok. So when you see stuff like that, and if you look at it, you find out that it's from there that a lot of these apps now get up to people like us, and then we too now start using it. And then, so yeah. for stickiness, for traction. It takes time. That's what I would say to any developer out there. It takes time. Okay, it's not so I, I wanted to, to just ask this. So before people develop an app, like every other product, don't you test it? At least test or carry out a research. Because you see a lot of people, Design you know, thinking. they just finish school and they're like, I don't want to work for anybody. I don't want to serve under anybody. I just want to be the next Mark Zuckerberg. I have to lock myself in a room <laughs> and just come out to something. Isn't there a process? Because so you have done it. What was your process? Why did you think that, you know, if you're going to do so this, did you do it like your will? proper market survey? So we, we ran surveys. Okay. We ran surveys. We discussed with them. Now, so here's my issue with surveys. When I'm asking people that, would you pay for this service? Everybody will tell you yes. Yes. <laughs> Particularly if you look at the space. So we did surveys with people we didn't know and we expected proper feedback. And they all gave feedback. Oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread, you know. But by the time the app is there and you say, okay, give me that money. That you promise. That's when you find out okay, that now. it's not that easy. So because it's International Women's Day tomorrow. We like your app. That's why we spent a, a few time talking about your app because it, it concerns women. It I love, I love. So my what are women. you giving to our women on International Women's Day from your app? Okay, so <laughs> there is a particular organization in Ibadan that we're doing a small partnership with for the International Women's Day, and um, what we've also done there is a particular copper a couple of weeks ago that also approached us. We gave them free sample products. We gave them about 300 products for them to talk to their people about it and all that. So it depends on the people that we've approached. We are also in talks with other doctors. There is a particular doctor, Dr. Yemi of Yemi Foundation, that we also work with. And we have partnership with most of them where we are able to, you know, if they tell us we need this, then we make it available to them. Awesome. So do you see, do you see a real future of, uh, I mean, when it comes to apps in Nigeria, do you see a real future? So here's the way I would answer that. A couple of years ago, I was in the university, and um, for me to get, I won't mention the name of the bank, for me to get money sent to me by my parents, I was in OAU, and for me to get my parents to send me money in Lagos to OAU used to take about three days. Mm. Mm. Now, today, if I tell you I've sent you money and you don't get the alert, you're going it to call me and yeah, say, yeah, you're yeah, lying, yeah. no, yeah. do you yeah. get? So my point is, if you look at the future, they're it's really, inevitable. it's inevitable. If you look at it, we spend more time on our mobile phones. If you look at even most devices now, they actually show you your screen time. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, we basically live on our phones. We, we are like this most times. Absolutely. You know, so it's inevitable that most of these things, again, if you look at buying patterns, behavior of users, you'll find out that back in the days, a, your average lady really has time to go shopping and all that. These days, you just want to order it and then it and gets delivered to, to you and free up time for you to do other things, which includes staring at the phone. <laughs> do all right. So. Okay. <laughs> you were gonna I was going to ask, do, do you think that people trust Nigerian apps? What is the adoptability? How do people 
embrace Nigerian apps. So by the end of the day, when you go to your app store, you don't find this is a Nigerian app written on it. Nope. You don't. Well, but there's some that um, they look indigenous. So, for example, so you hear things like Okada books. Obviously, you would think that it's no. Funny Nigerian. enough, I actually thought Okada books was a foreign. Oh, you did. Yes, because okay. the brand is impeccable. Like they did a fantastic job with their branding. So, by the end of the day, <laughs> if you if you're trying to develop an app, whether local or international, mm -hmm. and your user interface is pretty awesome. Most people won't care where it's from. from. Okay. Most they will people use it don't. anyway. Will, yeah, as long as it's solving a problem, a problem, you get. As long as it's solving it. If you look at your Instagram, Instagram at a point, Facebook, everybody were on desktops. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, Facebook realized that, look, people are going to leave desktop to mobile devices. So they quickly they moved to, to Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So when you understand that, you'll find out that. And even Instagram, after a while, they started looking at other apps out there. They tried to acquire some, some they couldn't acquire. For example, WhatsApp, hmm. your WhatsApp statuses. If you look at your WhatsApp statuses right now, it's about to be monetized. I have a lot of Amazon people there. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, it's so about to be monetized. Wow. That's awesome. Yes, because ah, tell us, how, so many, how many views do you have on your WhatsApp status? I always have at least 50% of my, what's it called, of my... Of contacts. my contacts view my status. Exactly. I'm so, one of the even ones. I don't want to know. And think about it. The connection on your WhatsApp status, you know the person, the person knows you. Yeah. So there's an element of trust. So you can actually even sell so, quicker. Exactly. Wow. So that way, they're trying to monetize that such that while you are viewing your friend's WhatsApp status, you view an ad. But to be <laughs> honest. Okay. We oh, want I to like talk about one. the money. Wait, wait, wait. I like this one that you just said. <laughs> it's time for us to make money. You know you but can actually monetize even your WhatsApp status now. Ah. We're not aware. All right. But we want to hear. You will stay here. Yes. <laughs> Alicia Bazaar will join us right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.